morning ma'am so uh, good morning so the first question is uh, you have held the key position at education institutes throughout your professional career uh, what keeps you connected with the education sector and how has your experience been so far with the institute well i am in education sector for last uh, 36 years now uh, and i don't think i would like to trade my experience with any other sector i am uh, i am very very uh, perfectly happy in what i am doing uh, the major reason is this is this is one sector wherein you never go uh, i mean you are always current uh you are always current from multiple contexts in the sense if i am teaching a subject uh there is no option but to remain current i am reading continuously i am doing my research i am publishing so you are current in uh, your delivery your uh, research your study you are also current because you are always with an age group who is between 18 to 22 and and which is the most current age group ever in the world is this 18 to 22 so if you are with that age group for your entire career uh, i guess you are always current and hence uh, i'm i'm very satisfied with uh, the way uh, with the sector that i am with of course there are multiple uh, issues that you would like to improve there are changes that you would like to bring about but all said and done this is one uh, sector which does not allow you to grow old i get it thanks thank you ma'am uh, so uh, next is uh, being the director of indoor campus at skkms nmims team to the university what is your philosophy of the leadership and how would you describe your leadership style okay so i'll first answer uh, uh, Um, my leadership style and then in the context of nmims for indoor campus what changes i had to bring about slightly uh, <clears throat> so uh, i have been in leadership role now since 2008 uh, so quite some years that i am managing uh, educational institute my primary uh, uh, focus on whatever you may call it style is that unless you are in sync with the stakeholders who who are part of your system your leadership uh, does not succeed so if i am if i am taking decisions they will be for students they will be with all the interest of students uh, keeping in mind all the interests of students whatever policies uh, we would like to make or i would like to make or uh, execute as a leader they would be kept with this primary stakeholder uh, in mind so so that is that is my my uh, style of leadership the second uh, aspect of uh, leadership that i very very firmly believe is that in education uh, so education organization generally are not or cannot be very strictly hierarchical like production unit kind of yes. uh, organization they are not they're fairly flat so there are there is there are teachers and there are teachers and few of the teachers also do administration that's that's my belief as far as uh, education uh, education institutes are concerned and hence my uh, uh, belief in leadership for a college or a university would be that it has to be done in sync with uh, all the professors so what i do wherever i go i mean in my earlier institute even in nmims we have a team of associate dean working with me here in an in indoor campus and we meet once in a week we have a calendared meeting every every wednesday at a time when all of us are free from our time table or daily time schedules and it's a semi formal meeting so the issues from uh, the, the inter schools to intra schools to any issues regarding administrative uh, uh, nitigities all these things are discussed very freely sometimes issues related to students also so that 
if i do not have a solution somebody else may readily come up with the solution and this is how the plan for the week kind of uh, is made uh, so so this is this is what i firmly believe that it is the uh, collaborative way in which if you manage an institute that's the best especially if it's a education institute as far as an mims indore uh, campus uh, is concerned uh, i'm very fortunate nmims has very well laid policies for almost all the administrative aspects so there is nothing ad hoc that we do may it be uh, from how a student has to be inducted to uh, the uh, university to what would we be uh, uh, talking at every point of the time with the student so there is a very detailed student resource book which gets designed for every batch and uh, there are processes for uh, everything that student needs to do as far as admin is concerned so may it be paying the fees may it be booking uh, certain facilities uh, of the campus may it be uh, some worry about the time scheduling everything has a well laid process and hence uh, a lot of burden is actually taken off uh, when you have processes uh, well set uh from the uh, the leadership position because it runs like a well oiled machine and then uh, you only have to worry about if some hiccups come or any new thing that you would like to introduce so in that sense i'm very fortunate i uh so next is how do you strategize about the key programs and the plans for marketing and administration of your school being the director of indoor campus at scms nmims team to the university okay so yes uh, now marketing is uh, a slight uh, concern as on date we are fairly new in indoor yet uh, indoor has a different culture and hence uh, we nmims believes in uh, publicity by doing rather than uh, just publishing in in print media or something like that so we need to do a good work and it's the word of mouth that carries a lot of weight in telling people that that we exist uh, in this part of the country so yes uh, this process though is slow but uh, i believe it's a long lasting process so yes some strategies we have we have uh, framed uh, if you must know uh, in mims indore campus uh, is by far Uh, i i can very confidently say by far the best uh, as far as infrastructure is concerned uh, in indore uh, made be our classroom made be our uh, canteen made be our i mean something you may find trivial but something like washrooms which is such an essential part when you spend the whole day uh, right. as a student on campus every single detail has been um, so well planned and executed that the campus uh, actually uh, entices you to study it's 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 that good i mean library is um, one infrastructure which i haven't uh, seen in my 35 years of career such beautifully um, uh, laid down library beautiful uh, interiors and comfortable furniture very very nice ambiance for one to study so by far it's one of the best infrastructure uh, in central india um, the programs that we run uh, are also very very um, uh, kind of programs that are in so far as today's uh, student group is concerned so we have a bba program which is a very well laid syllabus we have an engineering program which is uh, in computer engineering so that's that's the one which is in demand we have our um, key mba tech uh, in computer engineering which is a dual degree uh, we have a law program which is very well designed law program uh, one of the one of the most forward looking law programs uh, syllabus that we run and we of course have the flagship mba uh, course and we have a program called bcom honors which is uh, again very extensive uh, and quite intense commerce program so with great infrastructure with great program uh, structure uh, it is it is the 
the challenge is to communicate to uh, the local region right. that uh, this is what it is at Indore campus. We have strategized it uh, in many ways. Uh, so uh, we have planned, in fact, a, a very, very interesting program for school children so that they can visit the campus, see for themselves the infrastructure, uh, experience the expertise of our faculty and the peer group uh, to make their informed choice for their uh, further education. So that's that's the key strategy that we we have planned. Uh, so basically, the education system in India and other foreign countries are structured very differently. Uh, in your experience, what can an inbound student gain from studying here in your institute? Okay, that's a very good question. So there is. Uh, I, I fully endorse that as far as undergrad education is concerned, uh, we compare with the best always. Our undergrad education, may it be the delivery, may it be the designing of syllabus, the rigor that we give at undergrad level uh, is by far very superior to many countries uh, uh, across the world. And hence, uh, and that's what I believe. As a teacher, my belief is that <clears throat> the rigor has to be done uh, well before. At post-grad, what you do is you are specializing in a niche area. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the depth that you get. But the, the, the breadth of knowledge and the rigor, the capacity to actually uh, sit through a, a difficult problem and ensure that you are able to solve this kind of rigor you have to develop at a school and undergrad level yes. and the curriculum that that uh, NMIMS uh, has, uh, has it proposes for every single program that it runs exactly endorses that that you will be able to do things if you do undergrad from uh, NMIMS not just get so if you if you are passing a law program you will be in a position to actually practice if you are passing a, a become honors program or oh, you would be very very well versed with the uh, systems of the country accounting system of the country with a sufficient hands-on because there is a compulsory internship in build with our school of commerce it's compulsory for every school of commerce student to do a summer internship uh, in, in a desired uh, um, uh, area. So if you are a commerce student, you of course would be doing an accounting area. If you are a BBA student, you have a choice to do it either in uh, finance or in marketing, or should you be wanting to do some social kind of work, HR or social area. So these are the kind of, uh, um, what do you say, micro details, which to my mind must attract an inbound student. Because that's the rigor that our undergrad programs uh, offer. And to my mind, uh, for an 18 year old, I mean, your age group 18 to 21, this is what uh, would help. Thank you. Uh, so, how does the curriculum of Indore campus at SVKM's NMIMS Dean Women University ensure the best practice of industry? Uh, so, if you say curriculum, it is an across NMIMS curriculum. So, we don't run we don't run a separate curriculum at NMIMS Indore campus. It's NMIMS curriculum, right? We are a we are a NMIMS campus, and curriculum is whether you study in Mumbai, whether you study in Navi Mumbai, whether you study in Chandigarh or in Hyderabad, Bangalore or in Indore, you are made to go through the same rigor. It's the same examination system that we uh, we have across the campuses. So, which means that as far as quality is concerned, it is very stringently measured uh, at, at, at one point of uh, place. And that's what is affected in all the campuses. So, if I have to now talk particularly about uh, curriculums, our, uh, uh, so we have three undergraduate programs, engineering, um, law, and commerce, as we know, and one postgraduate program, which is in which is the MBA program. Uh, so, if you see engineering program again, engineering program is uh, it is a mandate to all of us. So, Indore campus also adheres fully with the mandate. So, if I'm if I'm teaching, let's say 
uh, 80% of uh, as as the core curriculum which is part of the syllabus which is 100% part of the syllabus over and above that we would be connecting to industry and the tech trainings would be given to student by connecting to not just any industry industry like tcs industry like in process industries so since we are in indoor industry like impetus so we will be we we do connect with these industry and it is their expert who spend uh, a good number of hours so in a semester uh, like for example we had we just had a session completed by tcs it was a good 15 hour training done by tcs experts for our student and i the the plan is to do such training every semester with different industry so by the time the student passes out as an as an engineer he is not only theory solid which we will give him but he is also tech solid uh, very very tech uh, uh, confident which industry gives him and i don't see then any reason why he should not he or she should not have a flourishing career may it be his own organization if one chooses to become an entrepreneur or a, a career with some good it uh, industry for commerce and bba uh, it is not only it is not only the curriculum uh, which is let me tell you it is difficult curriculum uh, if if one thinks bba is a cake walk and bcom is a cake walk not for an mims curriculum our bba is a very well designed so there is a there is a good content of maths whether it is bba or bcom honors it's a very maths solid content and hence whatever you are studying whether you are studying strategizing in marketing or you are studying some finance subject your maths background is made very very strong and hence you you actually stand on a very great foundation in order to start your career the second most important thing that is done with bba and bcom honors curriculum is we have a number of student clubs we call we call them students clubs and they are the clubs which are which is for not only for undergrad in sync with mba post grad uh, post graduate uh, schools and they specialize in areas like marketing finance obhr literature um, arts and culture the for so multiple areas and the kind of expertise they bring from outside uh, for their club activities so the clubs don't only do fun program they also do a good number of workshops which are very generously supported by university and it is these workshop wherein the the presence of expert uh, contribute to the learning of student so they are always over and above the syllabus and such activities are plenty full uh, in in indoor campus definitely actually in all campuses of nmims but definitely in indoor campus so that's about for uh, uh, school of commerce for law is a very different ball game so lawyers have a, i mean law program has a very structured internship program inbuilt with the curriculum so it is it is very well designed that after semester 2 the internship is with uh, let's say ngos after semester 3 or 4 the internship is with the courts after semester uh, next semester it is with uh, some good law firm so they have graded internships uh, after every in every academic year and besides that there are uh, competitions which are almost i must say uh, like a part of curriculum so mooting is very very aggressively practiced uh, in student client counseling is very very aggressively practiced uh, amongst the student so these are the practices which are inbuilt with the curriculum and i mean it is it, why i am saying inbuilt with the curriculum kyunki humne usko ek culture bana diya hai ki uh, nmims ka law school these things have to happen in mims school of commerce these things have to happen so they are not usme syllabus mein there are no marks or uh, grades which will carry uh, your percentage but they are sacrosanct for every student so there they these certificates when they carry probably at some point they weigh them more than their transcripts that uh, uh, that one maybe after a few years so this is this is how and of course mba program uh, is all about 
experience experiential learning so all these clubs are extremely active uh, so it percolates down from mba to school of commerce uh, law has its own line the engineering has its own line so that's that's the key difference that we believe that we bring in in our in our uh, education at anyman is in law uh so any insights into how the indore campus at skm and nims linked to university could be more welcoming to students of different race or economic backgrounds so uh a we uh, i mean with of different race i would like to say that we don't distinguish we don't distinguish we all are on first name basis so the first thing that we do is we call everyone by first name so there is there is there is no miss uh, mrs so and miss so the second name we don't identify ourselves right like that so for example i am all my students call me prachi so that's my first name i i don't i am not known by my second name so as far as race and these things are concerned we are very inclusive there is there is no distinction uh for economic uh, uh, differentiator yes uh, uh, i must say that uh, we uh, the 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 um, infrastructure that is been provided and hence the fee structure that is been charged is commensurating with each other so there is some uh, there might be some uh, economically uh, uh, weak student who would find it probably slightly hard to pay but believe me the policies of the campus are very very uh, to say friendly so there is no uh, hardship that is uh, given to the student there is uh, there is enough leniency which is offered to these students which allows them to um, uh, probably pay in installments and things like that so these are these are certain issues we also have tie ups very good tie ups with uh, uh, our banks and they extend uh, extremely friendly and soft loans to our students so we announce these uh, bank initiatives uh, very openly to our students and encourage that should anybody find because we are very very uh, confident ki uh, undergrad ke baad bachcha apne pair pe khada hone hi wala hai he or she will be able to repay that soft loan without any uh, hardships and difficulties so we we do connect our students to uh, these soft loans and uh, that's how the economic diversity is managed about race as i said we don't distinguish period that's that's the bottom line right uh, what do you think your roles and responsibility to the university and students are to the students i will first answer because that's okay. most important yes. i i find myself more responsible to students i am of course always responsible towards university because that's where i'm employed but uh, but my prime role as a uh, director and of course as a teacher first is towards students so what is my role uh i i believe that uh the students which come to us primarily undergrad students 18 to 21 uh, they are in a in a very funny uh, age group they are adults 18 above they are they are in all legal respects they are adults but in certain respects uh, they are still confused yes they are confused about what what may happen to them after they leave because they have lived a very secured life in school uh, a largely secured life even in on college campus and post that it's just an open world for them even if they want to do post grad it is a humongous amount of choice that they face so they are they are somewhat confused i believe our role is majorly that of mentor now subject teaching is just one aspect information giving is no more subject teaching subject right. teaching is about literally hand holding them and taking them through the correct path for that domain learning and equally important for me is to hand hold them and take them to equally correct path in life so i am i see my role uh, largely as mentor uh, then uh, pure or only subject teacher uh, and that 
that's what is my responsibility i feel that i should have all the students who pass out of nmims indore campus exiting as not only a bcom honors or bba or btech or bllb or bblb but they should exit as a confident and self decisive person they they should be able to de- decide eventually for themselves what is right and what is not right so if they are able to make that decision uh, they'll never go wrong in life and they'll never fail so that's that's what i see my role as uh, towards the student as far as university is concerned my role uh, i see as i mean obviously primary as a administrator uh, to optimize all resources and and ensure that there is a very conducive atmosphere across all the stakeholders at indore campus may it be faculty may it be non teaching may it be students may it be parents very equal uh, stakeholder may it be the industry who come and recruit uh, from our campus so my role is that uh, uh, who, who keeps all these strings together so that's what and and efficiently and optimally uh what do you think should be the university's top priority over the next 10 years the education scenario is uh, set to change uh, drastically nep with nep uh, execution uh, as a mandate and in full swing uh, we still i i believe that we still live fairly in silos what do i mean when when i say that is we still engineering school is engineering school uh, commerce school is commerce school law school is law school uh, unless it is absolutely mandatory engineering school does not talk to law school <laughs> in the sense uh, academically i am saying not students do talk faculty does talk we all mix together but uh, academically we we very rarely talk to each other so this the in coming 3 to 4 years our 10 years is too long i don't look at that long term of policy currently uh, but if i if you ask me short term goal we we will have to absolutely now strategize ourselves to establish this uh, this strong interdisciplinary link amongst all the school so currently if i take admission in law school i do only law school courses i i maybe one or two elective i may take from other school but it is not a norm or it it does not happen as a routine but it will have to start happening as a routine as i said if i have to send out a student as a person who is capable of taking decision by looking at uh, looking across the domain areas then i must be able to take uh, a law course being an engineering student i must be able to take an accounting course being a law student and these things are uh, are going to be uh, so this diversity of uh, across the schools have to be brought on one platform and students should be able to freely utilize that diversity in order to pick and choose uh, what is their interest and what is it that they would like to further study on upon so this uh, to my mind has to be a very important uh, work that as university we will have to do um so what are some of the biggest challenges you see both for higher education in general and for indore campus and any suggestion you would like to give to the current youth and aspiring students so this the the answer that i gave you i see as the biggest challenge as far as uh, <laughs> higher education is concerned so it's not only a concern of nmims or nmims indore campus i am reasonably certain it's a concern of all the higher education institute because we have been living in our own world uh, if if i am an engineer i don't move out of engineering college even once that that's the that's how the things were and the things are set to change so it's a huge amount of change management exercise um, uh, the 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 physical change management because i should work out that nitty gritties of student being able to do something in other school other school students being able to do something in my school and the mindset change of uh, me as a teacher that look uh, if it's my subject i should be able to teach it to even a non domain person and how do i do that 
how do i teach the basics of engineering to a law student how do i teach the the basics of uh, um uh, law to an engineering student because it is necessary as a as a corporate person he may have to uh, go through some times in his life some aspects of law so how do i teach him so as a teacher it's a huge change management and <laughs> if i am not hurting the teacher community teachers are very hard to change hum log bahut zyada hai strong ho jate hain ye mera subject hai Uh, this is what i'm good at this is what i'm best at and this is the only thing that i can teach or i will teach become such a, a, a life uh, for a teacher that now if i am told to teach that look allow your students to move out and allow your you yourself to teach to some other student extremely difficult i have a mindset that only such kind of student can become engineer or take an engineering course wo mujhe i will have to leave that mindset so that's that's one challenge across the higher education that i see uh, from the administrative challenge that we will be facing of course the second challenge that higher education sees is there is uh, uh, slowly but steadily the the trend that used to be uh, or that is still prevailing in uh, western countries is also prevail is also appearing in india that why should i do degree if i can get a skill and if a, if certifications are uh, uh, fine um, and that fetches me the work that i need to do oh i don't need that university stamp right so in short our lives are being threatened uh, with this kind of a mindset it's not an incorrect yes it's not an incorrect mindset and it's something which uh, which is going to uh, kind of percolate even more strongly so we as higher education institute will have to adapt to this uh, as a teacher i i teach a lot of conceptual teaching but as a teacher do i do skill teaching probably not so much so i will have to reskill myself as a teacher in order to not only be strong conceptually but also do to be able to do that skill teaching which means shayad mujhe bhi 6 mahina kahin ja ke kaam karna padega kisi industry mein जो स्किल मैं पढ़ाना चाह रही हूँ जो स्किल ये सो अज अमाउंट ऑफ री लर्निंग ऑल ऑफ एस विल हैव टू डू एट हायर एजुकेशन एंड दैट आई फाइंड एज अ रियल रियल चैलेंज फॉर हायर एजुकेशन इन पर्टिकुलर इफ आई कम टू चैलेंजेस फॉर एन एम आई एम एस इन डॉर कैंपस इन पर्टिकुलर सो अवर करेंट चैलेंज वी आर वी हैव समथिंग वेरी नाइस अबाउट इन डॉर कैंपस दैट करेंटली वी हैव दीज फोर स्कूल्स ओनली सो from a typical university perspective we are quite tiny and and i like about, i like that about it why because we all are very homogeneous group we we everyone knows every students a student is free actually to go to any school and take advice from any other uh, faculty of other domain as a mentor uh, can take as a mentor so that's a nice thing but that's also a challenge because um am i mentally equipped to do that is my every faculty uh, equipped to do that am i known in in this central part of uh, uh, india for this kind of an education that look we have an education wherein uh, we we absolutely connect to our students so that's my challenge how do i how do i communicate this to uh, this part that we are not uh an education organization which is disinterested in any student i am very much interested in my student i am very much i am very much want to be part of uh, my students uh these four years of life that they spend on our campus so that's that's my challenge how do we communicate this kind of uh, what kind of events we should organize so that we we spread this word across what kind of uh, uh, pr we do so that we spend this word across but that's that's who we are uh, all of us know all of us and that's that's to my mind is a very very important thing in these days because uh, hum log um, because of this digitalization and the virtual world we are actually losing a lot of human connect mm -hmm. so right. the ability to human connect is what i personally very strongly promote and that's what i would want my campus to be known as 
thank you so much ma'am uh, let's uh, conclude this interview here uh, there is some kind of time constraint on the zoom so let's keep it to this uh, thank you ma'am thank you. it was so good talking to you thank you so much thank, thank you for your time ma'am